And welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to Off the Press and have a review of the stories making headlines across the country this morning. Uh, we're starting with the daily independent newspapers. Uh, and expect that should be on your screen in a few seconds. Yes, it says banks fear e-Naira may erode profitability. Plateau local government polls, APC clears all chairmanship and councillorship positions. Also, 1999 Constitution is a glorified death certificate, says Bakari. Tidibu reunites with associates as Songwulu hosts APC leader. It says, I return hale and hearty and well. And that's from the ex-governor. Autumn not responsible for insecurity, says Middlebelt Forum. And petroleum tanker drivers suspend planned nationwide strike. 2023 presidency, Oshimbajo on a coalition course with Tinubu pushes to succeed Buhari. We can also find on the Daily Independent, a 308 billion naira presidency, National Assembly budgets, dwarf Ministry of Powers, 301 billion naira. Zoning PDP national chairmanship position, leaving presidency open risky, says uh, Bode George. Now let's move away from the Daily Independent to what we can find on the punch. It says here, why federal government can't remove fuel subsidy now? And that's from NNPC marketers and experts. It will be disastrous to remove subsidy without refineries working, Ipman says. And subsidy now political matter. All Nigerians shoulder in it, says XLCCI DG. No provision in 2022 budget, but petrol subsidy continues, declares NNPC. Budget. Um, finance power projects get lion's share of 1.16 trillion naira loans. And also federal government to spend 44.64 billion naira on military equipment, arms and ammunition. SAN writes Malami threatens suit over Nigeria's $62 billion with oil firms. Change of guard imminent in 2021. Throw away 1999 constitution, says Bakari. Still on the news, uh, or still on the punch, rather. Presidency, Doc Bessie backs north. Tinubu says restructuring a must. Special salary, paying education students unsustainable. And it's a Greek gift, says the NPTA. Students merciless uh, beating. Quara orders Arabic school. Uh, Arabic school heads suspension raises panel. We can also find here NDLA raids Lagos or your drug joints and others arrest 110 dealers. Man arrested for allegedly defiling 13-year-old neighbor's daughter as wife goes for vigil. Those are the big ones on the punch this morning. And now let's see what the leadership newspapers has. It says here yeah, each Nigerian owes foreign creditors 64,684 naira. Puts Nigeria in the right direction, Bakari tells uh, President Mohamed Buhari, and also only God can give and take life. That's from former Lagos State Governor Abola Ahmed Tinubu. Nigerians kick as federal government approves genetically modified maize. And um, I think that's all we can share on the leadership this morning. Finally, on the daily trust this morning, Benwe Burno IDPs sacked by insecurity, fleeced by aid workers. How sharp practices worsen matters. Officials deny neglect uh, charge. Female IDPs survive through prostitution in Borno. And it says here, we've built 10,000 houses for them. Two years after, federal government loses 24 billion naira to land border closure in Ogun. This is not the time to break up Nigeria, says the Vice President Oshimbaju. Electoral bill, Senate Rep Committee uh, to meet this week for harmonization. And uh, I think a few others. Pandora Papers, how Bishop Oedipo set up company for wife and kids in tax haven. Uh, despite release claim, nine, uh, Niger monarch still missing one month after. And finally, 2022, federal government votes 650 million naira for Mambila Power Project. I'm going to start this morning and say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Mark Adebayo. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, viewers. Thanks for joining us. I want us to start with um, the story on the top right, uh, top left corner of the Daily Independent. It says 308 billion naira uh, presidency and National Assembly budgets dwarfs Ministry of Powers 301 billion naira. Let's start with your thoughts on that one. Uh, well, thank you so much. That, that, you know, 
the successive governments in this country have always misplaced priorities when it comes to the annual issue of budgeting. Where the government do not see a reason to fund the critical sectors that will affect the lives of Nigerians positively. I do not. I, I think power issue is a major challenge in this country, and it should it should have uh, it should get the priority attention of government. But we are not seeing that in this uh, in this budget. As I'm talking to you now, there is no power here. Uh, I have to be using alternative uh, source of uh, power. In Abuja, Abuja's power situation is always very, uh, you know, uh, terrible from inception. From inception. That is why, if you look at the budget of the federal government itself, it's billions of naira every year being budgeted for generators, and it is it is uh, uh, it is a shame that we're having we having that. I, I believe that power should have t t gotten uh, more rather than uh, the other five followers expeditions, uh, you know, which which uh, we are we are having in uh, in this budget. I mean, for instance, the, this year's budget, the federal government is budgeting. I mean, next year, 2022, is budgeting 26 billion naira for travels and feeding of the presidency alone. I mean, we, we, who does that? And then in, in this heavily indebted economy, now you are budgeting 26 billion for yourself for feeding and travels alone. I mean, that we, we keep. Misplacing our priorities, the government, uh, you know, it's, it's not only this government that's guilty of that. You know, even the government be, before it, only that this one is is more guilty. That is the problem we are having. How can you budget twenty six billion for feeding uh, and, and travels? And look at how much you are, you are budgeting for for power. It is it is it is almost uh, sinful. You know, it's late to right. go to, there's a misplacement of priority. If you look at the total budget breakdown, the uh, you know, we are, we are having a budget. We are having a budget of sixteen point thirty nine trillion. And um, if you look at the allocations, some are not. Maybe maybe education is faring better this year uh, for for next year more than previous years. Maybe just faring a little bit better. But I believe education still deserves more than it's got this year. And another thing is that uh, because in this uh, look at the financing. You know, you are, you are going to finance this budget by, uh, by 3.61 trillion naira. Financing of of, budget, uh, of uh, debt, debt servicing, you know, is, is, is you are getting that that much. So it's a it's a it's a, it's a situation where you are you are in this type of depression, economic depression that Nigeria is currently going through. What you need to do is to is to face the critical sectors like education, like defense, because we are having insecurity, infrastructure, health. Those are the areas that should take priority attention of government should take human growth percentage of the of the budget, but we are not having that. All right. Um, I'm gonna say good morning also to Tunde Kolawale. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Kolawale, can you hear us? Yeah, good morning. How are you? Very well, thanks for joining us. Um, I want you to get your thoughts on also on the daily independent. Um, it says here 1999 constitution is a glorified death certificate, and that's from Tunde Bakari. Uh, let's get your views on that one. Hello. Can you hear us clearly, Mr. Kolawale? Good morning. Tunde Kolawale, good morning. Your question again. All right, I, I want you, you uh, to react to the story from Tunde Bakari on the Hello. Daily Independent. All right, we're going to have to re we'll reconnect with uh, Tunde Kolawale. Mr. Debayo, can you hear us? I'm hearing you loud and clear. All right. So let's get your view on that one. It says 1999 Constitution Glorified Death Certificate. And that's from Tunde Bakari. Well, the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended is, a, is, is actually a death sentence of this country. I've been issued from the very beginning. It, it, was, it was never meant to sustain this country. It is an unsustainable constitution, you know, being you know, uh, administered on the on unsustainable structures. Because the constitution defines the structures of the country. And the current structure as we have, a unitarized federalism. It's just a glorified federalism. We are not operating a federal system, actually. So the 1999 constitution is a, is a death sentence of the country. It is a, it is moribund. It is, it is unsustainable. And if we must keep Nigeria safe, if we must save Nigeria from, uh, from, untimely, from premature death, we need to revisit, review the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, to ensure 
through federalism to ensure through federalism. We cannot have, in a country of over 200 million people with the kind of diversity that we have, we cannot have a unitary system of government. And that is what we are having now. It is not sustainable. We have to go back to that constitution. If we must silence the people that are agitating for, you know, secession, we need to revisit the national constitution by allowing the country to practice true federalism. We need to go back to what used to work for us, which is region, region, uh, regional government. That is what I believe that the CCO political zones must be able to exercise independence uh, in terms of governance in many areas. We should just leave customs, defense, international diplomacy to the federal government. Let these regions determine their, their, their own fate by themselves, economic fate, their social fate, their political fate by themselves. We cannot have one person sitting in Abuja and uh, you know, dictating to everybody around the country. It's not going to work. So the national constitution is an abattress that we must throw away and give us a living constitution. I agree to that extent with uh, Pastor Tundi Bakari that we have to review uh, the national national constitution to, to, so that to make this country work. It's, not, it's unworkable. The national national constitution is unworkable. Okay. So it's not working for this country. We need to, we need to do something. We need to think out with it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to try once again. To Nicola Wale, can you hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you. Good morning. All right, good morning once again. All right, so let's move away from the Constitution now. And there seems to be, on the Daily Independent, um, one story that is, you know, having different angles. It says here, Tinubu reunites with associates as Songwulu host uh, APC leader, Wolame Tinubu. And at the same time, on the Daily Independent, it says, 2023 presidency, Oshimbajo on collision course with Tinubu pushes to succeed Buhari. Uh, what are your views, and you know, is it likely that this is just clickbait? Well, um, those are two very interesting stories. Rather than them, uh, if I have my way, I wouldn't be commenting as such on uh, Alaji Pola Ahmed Tinubu. In my humble opinion, I sympathize with him with respect to some of the health challenges that he has had a very, very great place. But when we are talking in terms of presidency, that is the person who will be succeeding, General Muhammad Buhari. I am not too sure that he will be a fit and proper person to succeed in for so many reasons. It is not on his side, just like Dr. Banire has said. Anybody above the age of 60 shouldn't be shadowing the responsibility of the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1923. We have enormous challenges in our hands. We therefore need a very, very agile person who can move around who can shake things off, who has the wherewithal to be able to pilot the affairs of the country. Take, for example, look at what uh, Macron is doing in France. Wherever there is a problem, wherever there are challenges, you find the President Macron hopping around the places in his chopper to dial tension to talk to people and to make sure that the country is pilot uh, alive. With Oshimbato, I'm also not sure that he has the credentials to become the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For also a few reasons. One, when you read the Nigerian constitution, the economy of the country is put in the hands of the vice president. And the General Muhammad Buhari has also come out to say, look, he gave that portfolio to Professor Yemi Oshindaga. If you look at what the performance of the economy should be, it means that uh, Vice President has said, hopefully, if you study the responsibility of managing the economy and the economy is in this kind of startup, then uh, uh, what is likely to be his performance even if he becomes the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Furthermore, 
I see a lot of people praising him. His pastor is intelligent, he's an orator, and all manners of things and all that. But you see, they say, tell me, I mean, show me your friends, and I will speak who you are. If I say, Zibajo is able to operate this smoothly and this freely in the midst of the people who have um, perfected kleptocracy and legitimized it, that means he himself may not be as clean or as pattern as people are pretending or are presenting him as, um, as uh, he is. For God's sake, these two people, she said Nigeria, the tragedy of what we are witnessing under the APC and President uh, General Muhammad Buhari's uh, uh, regime. And she was the too old for the church. He, he also appears not to be medically and physically fit. Uh, too many controversies too with regards to, to, to issues of uh, corruption. Just look at uh, the house he's staying in London today. He reports in the paper today is that uh, that property where he went to recuperate, where people have been visiting, was bought with flush money. Was bought with flush money. He hasn't come out to deny that. Even though the person that said it's fronted for him, or bought the house for him, is trying to deny it. But the Pandora paper, which uh, international journalists investigated, and uh, came up with, just like uh, the ones they did before, hardly tell lies. If Nigerians mean uh, journalists are not thorough with some of their investigations, you can't say that with two foreign journalists. A consortium of journalists from different parts of the country, oh. some of the best in their trade, oh, came Kalawale. out without very ranging indictment. Mr. Kolawole. Uh, 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 can, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Kolawole? So, for that reason, I don't think we should be talking about those two people's presidencies. All right. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in Mark Adebayo on the same uh, discussion. Um, but I want you to, you know, take it from the angle of, you know, Southwest politics. Um, and if this really is just, you know, a newspaper trying to create, you know, chaos here and there. Um, but Mr. Adebayo, do you, what are your thoughts, you know, and how, you know, do you expect this to play out? With regards, uh, you know, the struggle for power around the southwest uh, politicians. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a real struggle, a real struggle for power. I, I want to think uh, personally. I would have loved to see an Ashiwaju with his pedigree, uh, I, I, I like, like he did in 2015, and like he has been doing in Lagos. To just nominate some a young, vibrant uh, person to, to become Nigeria's uh, next president, it would uh, it will further it will further enhance his political credibility as a statesman in this country. It will have been better for him to do that. But having said that, he has the constitutional right to contest for the presidency of Nigeria. His biggest undoing. He's not even himself. You know, he has a couple of uh, baggages, like the, uh, like the lawyer has said, mentioned. But if General Muhammad Buhari, at his age, had performed, had performed as a president, had given Nigerians the kind of leadership he promised in 2015, as you nobody will be talking about the issue of age. Uh, the, the, the age consideration will not come into the leadership variable of Nigeria if General Muhammad Buhari had performed well. But this is a president who has performed less than 10%. So uh, people believe it's his age, but I do not believe it is age. I mean, uh, he's about the same age uh, with uh, uh, the president of, of the U.S. So it's not about age. It is everything General Muhammad Buhari has been doing is intentional. Whether in the area of open grazing, whether in the area of uh, tracing the uh, grazing routes or enabling the ATL and all those things, they, they, are, they are intentional. So it is not, it's not age. The president... It, what is distort, what is what is happening is a, it's a question of competence and on the issue of Shibaju, uh, 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 Professor Shibaju, the issue is that I do not believe that Professor Shibaju has the kind of free hand that people think he has. I don't think so. I don't think he has the free hand to do to to, to even run the economy the way he should. 
he, he does he has he has the boss he has to clear things even at times we are hearing that he has to clear things with the presidency for staff and the secretary to the government of the federation it is as bad as that so i do not think we should blame him uh, for that but i want to believe i want to believe that nigerians will prefer a new face as president of Nigeria, a new face. Let me call it a political virgin. Uh, 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 as, as the next president of Nigeria, a young, vibrant, educated, you know, uh, uh, Nigerian to become the next president of Nigeria. That is what. That is where the pendulum should swing now. I don't yep. think the political yeah, power. But, but, um, Mr. Debayo, what do you think about you know the possibilities of a clash between these two persons? Um, and factions that might be pitching tents, you know, either with uh, Bolamet Tinubu or with Oshimbaju. And if, or if the Nigerian government, if the Buhari administration decides to, you know, and this is me just thinking, you know, wild. If the Buhari mm -hmm. government decides to, you know, support and the, the Buhari Which government decides to pitch its tent with uh, the vice president as its, as its preferred, you know, successor. Um, of course, you know, there's always been rumors that, uh, you know, Bolamet Tinubu had, you know, had expectations of also taking over, you know, after Buhari. So, what do you think um, is likely of the, of that clash? Now, the, 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 that, that would be there's something that the fella called a for for fight, and then we have been hearing of this since last year that there's a major clash of interest between the first president and his political godfather, Ashwa Dibola I, I I I do not think this will work well for the southwest. If these two titans should clash, it's not going to work. You know, uh, in the interest of, of the Southwest. The uh, the earlier they settled this, the better. Nobody should ride under under one finger. Thinking the, both of them have presidential ambitions. The VP has presidential ambition. Yeah, Bola made Tinubu's presidential ambition is not a hidden is not a hidden agenda. It has been on the on, on, on the front burner for a long time now. And we are here since last year. We have been hearing there are you know there are some clashes of interest, and we see you can see that there, there were moves. There have been moves across the country by both uh, by both political figures uh, in the area of a uh, twenty presidential race. So uh, definitely that will be in, in, when it comes to power play, there will be clashes. There will be clashes. Right. How it pans out later, uh, only uh, only God will know. But if the presidency should, and that, that is going to be the game changer, wherever the presidency goes, whoever the presidency supports. That's going to be the game changer in this in this matter in these calculations. All right, you know, we'll see. What we know is that both of them have enough baggages that can, that can disqualify them from the presidency, and they are going to bring out the worst of themselves when the fight commences for real. All right, it's not we'll, going to. We'll see how it turns out. Um, to Nicola Wale, are you still with us? Um, yeah. Okay, so now let's move to Borno State. It's a story on the Daily Trust that I found very interesting. It says he has sacked by insecurity fleeced by aid workers and it's talking about how sharp practices have worsened the situations of uh, persons in idp camps um it says also that female idp survive through prostitution in borno while the government is claiming that they've built them ten thousand houses um share your thoughts on that one well it's a, it's a tragedy in the first instance that the people were within their own country they call me internally displaced person. But before I address that, let me quickly make a little comment on what my colleague over there has said about uh, age not being a factor. I disagree with him that age is a factor. In countries where age are no issues, are, are those countries that are very, very strong institutions, where governance is almost autopilot. Put anybody as the president of America, no matter what his age is, since he is, if he remains meant to copper, that is, if his brain capacity is still intact, he will be able to rule America conveniently and effectively. But here, institutions are not functioning, they are not working. So if you put somebody not on top of his game, who cannot do things and that, he is likely to be a colossal. Um, Australia. With the clashes of these two people, I agree with him that um, uh, it is uh, President uh, Mohammed Buhari at the end of the day that is going to be the game changer. So with that as it may, let's go to the IDP. The IDP people is an unfortunate thing. 
just like I said, people getting to stay in their own country, almost 10 years becoming refugees in their own country, it's uh, not exciting uh, enough. And then more importantly, we are not making provisions for these people to be able to live a decent uh, life. Look at the budget that has just been presented to the National Assembly. How much have you seen there that has been budgeted for the IDP compared to what has been budgeted for the Nigerian Nami, compared to what has been budgeted for travels and other exigencies in the presidency? So, I wouldn't be, if you also add to it the challenges of corruption that we see, or which is manifest in places like prison, in which two sums of money are earmarked for the feeding of an inmate. But those inmates virtually have to feed themselves. You could expect that the same thing is happening to the IDP. Uh, besides the Parano State Governor, who, in my humble opinion, appears to be sincere, appears to be hardworking, appears to be showing a lot of empathy to really rescue people from the dilemma or from this quagmire they have found themselves. I haven't seen much from any other, or from the federal government, for example, to alleviate the, the challenges that the IDPs are facing. So if the women are now into prostitution, to be able to feed themselves, if they are also, like we have had in some quarters, even uh, selling their children, to be able to raise money to keep those and, uh, and body together, some are also into selling of drugs and what have you. Some have also become informants for the insurgents, for the bandits. Some are also uh, gun runners in some of those IDP centers, simply because we have refused to make proper provisions for their upkeep. Not too long ago, you remember, money that should have been made to take care of IDP, millions of naira, were, were said to have been used to cut grass mm -hmm. in the IDP camp. Uh, not too long ago, too, the Nigerian Air Force had mistakenly bombed an IDP camp. Up to now, we haven't had much with regard to the concentration. And then the uh, inquiry that was committed, where that terror came from, in some other countries of the world, very high power panel will be set up and appropriate uh, sanctions and the remedies uh, put in place to ensure that has not happened again. But because we didn't investigate the first one, two other ones have happened uh, since then. So, the government should sit up. The Nigerian uh, people, the philanthropists, will also come uh, forward to support, especially the governor of Borono State, to ensure that we elevate the sufferings of uh, these ID people, IDP people. It's a nice thought that people will become internally displaced persons within their own country, in their own fatherland, because of an insurgency, because of um, a religious war that is just uh, inflicted by unconscionable and irresponsible. All right, um, I think we lost uh, to Nicola Walede. Mark Adebayo, can you still hear us? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing All right, so let, let's get you to speak on something on the punch this morning. It says, why federal government can't remove fuel subsidy now? And NPC marketers and experts are saying, and it goes on to say it will be disastrous to remove subsidy without refineries working. And that is from Ipman. Um, subsidy now a political matter. All Nigerians shouldering it. And also no provision in 2022 budget, but petrol subsidy continues, declares the NNPC. Share your thoughts on that one. Well, uh, let me from the let me start from the last one. Uh, the NMC says there is no provision for subsidy in the 2022 budget, but says that the subsidy will continue. I don't know the kind of magic they are going to uh, perform to, to bring that to bear. We are told that um, the Nigerian subsidy uh, subsidizes uh, oil to the tune of 150 billion naira per month, and that is 1.8 trillion naira annually. Uh, we are told that. Uh, the landing cost of petroleum in this country is 256 naira. We buy for 162 now, which means that the government subsidizes to the tune of 94 naira per liter. Okay. Um, one of the one of the biggest uh, frauds, uh, electoral fraud committed by President Buhari was to tell us in 2015 that there was nothing like fresh subsidy in the country. But for the past six years, he has been running a, a regime of subsidies. 
whatever will happen, my own major concern is that nobody should even think of uh, removing any subsidy because Nigerians are already over over oppressed, over repressed, over depressed in terms of the economy uh, of the country. Food prices are skyrocketed, skyrocketed by a minimum of 400 percent. So you cannot over you cannot we are already overburdened. So you cannot put any other burden on, on, on Nigerian masses. So they have to find a way to continue subsidizing the uh, the, the the fuel the fuel uh, consumption of, of of Nigerians. So the fact that uh, and then this is uh, they will continue to subsidize. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good it's good tidings, and I, I I think they should just continue to 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 subsidize no matter what happens. If uh, the the presidency can allocate twenty six billion naira for feeding uh, for two families, they should be able to continue to subsidize the. Uh, the full consumption of Nigerians. Yeah, because but but, but fine, I, I, because we're about to wrap up. I, I want you to you know help us understand this. If there's no provision for for it in the in the budget, then where does the money come from? You know to continue to pay subsidy. That was that was why I said I do not know the magic that NPC is, is going to perform. No, but and doesn't that tell the, you? The, the, or doesn't that mean that there is there are some sharp practices here and there, and some auditing that needs well proper auditing that needs to be done. With what really is going on with Nigeria's money? Which means that the president was right when he said in 2015 that, that nobody was subsidizing anything. Maybe now they have woken up to spend the coffee. Maybe we are not going to see the reality of the fact that subsidies is, is, is a fraud. And even if you remove it, if you don't put it in, in the budget, we can still continue to buy fuel at 162 naira. It means that, that something, something is fishy somewhere. Now, uh, you say you are not putting the subsidy in the budget, but then NPC. Is coming out to say that they will continue subsidizing even if, if the subsidy is not uh, is not in the budget. And I I, I agree with Ipman that it will be disastrous for anybody to think of increasing the fuel uh, price uh, the fuel prices again in this country. Look at what you are passing through in terms of electricity tariff. So if anybody increases, so if they say they are not going to incre increase it and it's not in the budget, it shows that uh, the, 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 the subsidy regime had been an abracadabra all this while, and they have an, an abracadabra uh, you know, response to it to, to make us continue to buy fuel at the current rate without it being in, in the budget. So somebody, uh, if it happens, there will be inquiries, there will be investigations. People have questions to answer. That is going to be the president of Nigeria is the petroleum minister. So he, he has questions to answer. And, you know, so he has to, people have to tell us where have all the subsidies been going to. We need to interrogate that issue. It will be interrogated. And that is what I think. I'm, but the most important thing is that, for me, is that nobody should think of increasing the pump price of fuel products. Nobody should think about that. It should not come right. at all. It's going to, it's going to lead, to, lead to a cataclysmic response from Nigerians. And of course, bear in mind that uh, gas uh, prices currently are, you know, the highest that they've ever been. It's uh, same thing with people, diesel. And uh, the same thing with diesel, with the, with the same thing with kerosene that used to be, that, that used to be the cheapest among the petroleum products. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, I can't, I don't know, but I think uh, one liter of kerosene now is, oh, is, is around 250, 260. One liter of kerosene that is supposed to be a sucker for the masses is is out of, is 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 uh is costlier than 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 than, than, than petrol than PMS is costly is costlier than uh, than this so it's it's uh, it's unfortunate it's unfortunate right. how do you how do you even defend that you know and that was one area that uh, late president uh, Yaradua you know did very well he, re he reduced the cost of uh, PMS and, and and made sure that kerosene got to the masses who needed it and he cut down the price substantially. How, how come right, the, people divided. are now buying uh, kerosene at, at that high cost? It's, it's ungodly. It's, it's in fact, right. it's something that we are now. Uh, it's a part of our leadership strategy, the tragedy. All right, uh, Mark Adebayo, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, very interesting conversations with you this uh, Monday morning. Uh, thanks for staying thank with so us. And of course, uh, wish you a beautiful weekend. TV Africa is the best in terms of uh, human and good stories that, that concern Nigerians. And uh, kudos to you for that. Thank you very much. Also to, uh, to Nicola Wale, thank you also for your time. And uh, sadly, we lost you at some point. Uh, we wish you a very interesting Monday ahead. Stay with us when we come back. A little bit of history. We're going back to 2002 to tell you about a Nobel Peace Prize that was given to a person on this day. We'll be back.